Just a reminder before today's programme, if you haven't seen the previous instalment of Weird Who, it can be checked out here on the channel. And in that previous instalment, we looked at the John Pertwee Zanussi video. And now, here on AMTV, time for the latest instalment of Weird Who. And this time we look at a square CD. The following programme is rated PG. AMTV recommends parental guidance. <laughs> It's time to get weird, boy! Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Weird Who. Now for today's topic, it's a little bit different than what we've looked at in the previous episodes. In previous episodes I've looked at very strange things on television or even corporate videos, but this time we're delving into the world of music. Now it's certainly fair to say that Doctor Who has never been any stranger to music when it comes to music releases. Even as far back as the 1960s there were vinyl records coming out of both the theme tune and more bizarre novelty records. I'm gonna spend my Christmas with a Dalek and hug him underneath the mistletoe. Even in the 70s you had stuff coming out, hell you had a whole Doctor Who sound effects album that came out which I sadly don't own. But it was really the 80s I think when releases of Doctor Who soared. You had music soundtracks, re-releases of the theme tune. Take for example this, this is the 12 inch single release of the 1986 theme tune which was arranged by Dominic Glynn. And this is a really cool release because it's got the holographic square on the front with you know store action figures you could buy in holographics because that was cool in 1986 you had on the back you had the theme you had the original theme and you had the disco s mankind theme from the 70s so all in all a nice good release you had special albums dedicated to it such as this one which is the doctor who 25th anniversary album released in 1988 to coincide with said silver anniversary this one rather than necessarily celebrating music across the whole series was more just tracks from the current era which was the Sylvester McCoy era so you had a lot of tracks from his first season season 24 and some tracks from season 25 as well as the new and updated version of the theme tune at that time by Kef McCulloch but again in the 60s onwards Doctor Who in various forms would also make an appearance on compilation albums such as this one, The World of BBC TV Themes, which was released in 1989, and the Doctor Who appearance here is once more the Kef McCulloch theme tune. And even today, Doctor Who still enjoys a healthy revival on the music scene. As well as digital downloads, you can now get classic Doctor Who soundtracks on formats such as vinyl, including this copy I have here of The Five Doctors, which I have done a review on on the channel, which you should check out, but with a brilliant cover and brilliant sounding recordings from the not just the original transmitted episode, but the special edition release as well. But while all those releases are cool, the release I wanted to talk about today was this one, Doctor Who Variations on a Theme. Now this was released around 1989-1990, and our time for Doctor Who as the show at this point was just about dead on TV, sadly. So this release came out at a very precarious time. It comprises of four tracks, which is four different remixes of the Doctor Who theme tune. You have the Mood version, which was arranged by Mark Ayres. You have the Terror version, which was arranged by Dominic Glynn. You have the Latin version, which was produced by Kef McCulloch. And you have the Special Regeneration mix, which was used in Panopticon 8, which was arranged once again by Mark Ayres. Doctor Who remixes in this day and age are nothing new. But I'm sure back in the late 80s, before the days of the internet and how we could freely make our own remixes of the signature theme, this must have been quite a fun release for fans. As you can see along the bottom of this vinyl release, it does indeed say limited edition. I picked mine up from a place known as The Who Shop in London, which I highly recommend you check out if you're a Whovian. But as this was the late 80s, vinyl was still the dominant format. However, cassettes were a nice runner alongside with them, but also you had the new emerging technology, CDs. And as a matter of fact, this Variations on a Theme was released on CD, which I have right here. Doc 2 Variations on a Theme, still limited edition. It's the same four tracks. But the thing about this particular CD release is it boasts to have the world's first square CD. A square CD? I think this needs to be seen to be believed. So let's crack this open and take a look. Well, here is the case. As you can see, it's the same sort of square as the vinyl edition back there, although this one's in white. World's first square CD, eh? Well, let's find out. Oh, well, yep, that, that is... That is certainly a square. This literally is a CD in the shape of a square. 
There you can see it says Doctor Who variations on a theme. You've got the company who made it, Metro Music International. You've got the four tracks there. And you also have a warning, which also comes on the CD, which is probably easier to read on there. So here is the warning on the CD case itself, which says, This CD is square in shape and therefore does not conform to the internationally recognized compact disc standards. Not all CD players will be capable of playing this CD and no liability is accepted for such non-compatibility or damage caused to players though attempting to play this CD. Yeah, what's the point of owning it as a square? So, as we've just established, yes, this is indeed a square CD, and it pretty much tells you, hey, late 80s person, that you know that brand new CD player that back then you probably would have paid quite a pretty penny for? Not only may this not work on it, it may damage your CD player. So, why did we decide to produce this as a square? Honestly, it's anyone's guess, but on YouTube there is a clip from someone claiming to work at the company, Metro Music Management, who sort of gives a little promotion, if you can call it that, of this square CD. Now, where's that, that pillock with the uh, square CD? Come over here. Let's have, a, let's have a little look at this. Come on, mister. He's got long hair. He looks like he's in the record company. Who, who are you, sir? Andy Grant, head of Metro Music. Andy Grant, head of Metro Music. <laughs> now, uh, why, uh, why bring out a square CD? They're expensive enough as it is. Well, it gets us on the telly with the record. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a, good, that's a good enough reason. That's a good enough reason. Okay, uh, is it, these are actually going to be sold. This is the first ever on television at Square CD. Yes, yeah, so there's going to be two thousand. They go in the shops in April. Yeah. It's about as much use as a square, a round tea bag. We already got square. Yeah, it can be, it can be played. Yes. Yeah, anything Definitely. decent on it? No. Oh right, okay. <laughs> you see, you see what the record companies are prepared to do to get a little plug. You know, they could bring down the price instead of making all these, couldn't they? Do you think the price will come down or not? Possibly, they only cost about a pound each to make. Do they really? Mm. A pound each to make? <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, as you saw from that clip there, the disc shown was more black and silver than mine, which is a more like standard C uh, CD sheen colour. I'm not sure if my CD is just worn over time. This is second hand, of course, but it's just interesting to note the different colours. A black and silver one would have actually been pretty cool. But now that you've heard that, you probably want to see if this square oddity works, don't you? Well. Let's pop it into the CD player and see if it destroys it. Okay, so as you can see, there is my Sony CD player. There's a Pac-Man, various Pac-Man memorabilia there. And the CD is there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the square CD in and we're going to find out if this actually works. So there is the disc. I'm going to put that down. It's reading it. Is it going to work? Oh. It's recognized it, four tracks. Right, key test. Let's see if it plays. Well, what do you know? It actually works. Well, much to my surprise, the Square CD actually worked. Who would have thought? Perhaps that warning was more for players back in the day. They may have not have been as sophisticated, but rest assured, if you have one of these Square CDs, chances seem high that it might actually work if you have proper equipment of the modern day. In terms of how limited this thing is, it's hard to say. I mean, mine is labelled number 381, so that suggests to me maybe there was only about a thousand of these produced, or at the absolute most, a couple of thousand. This is going to be 2,000. But as it indeed says limited edition at the bottom of not only this, but the vinyl issue as well, I think we can conclude this is a somewhat w rare release for Doctor Who music memorabilia. Nevertheless, I would still class it as really weird. I mean, yes, the square CD is the obvious weird thing of this, but just the release itself. It came at a time when Doctor Who was at its lowest, a time when the show was about to, or maybe at this point even, had been cancelled at the very end of 1989, and even though fandom wanted it to continue in some way, 
In terms of its profile, it was definitely low. So to release a limited edition thing like this on one hand makes sense for the fans, but I can't help but think, did these really sell out at the time? I must admit, trying to come across one of these Square CD variants is difficult because they actually released it as a standard CD as well, and it in fact got a standard CD re-release some years later in the mid-90s by Silver Screen. So if you want one of these original Metro Music Management Square CDs, you might be looking to pay a little bit. Granted, I paid about £30 for this disc. I mean, I really wanted this disc. I have them for a long time. I find the whole concept of a Square CD extremely novel, and also I wanted to make this video for you guys. But I'd only suggest picking this up if you're really serious about the Doctor Who oddities and if you just want to own some great remixes of the Doctor Who themes. If you do want this but don't want to shell out for the Square CD, as I say there are standard CD versions of this and there is also the 12 inch final release right there. I'm not sure whether other Square CDs were produced. Perhaps there were, or perhaps this one might be the only one in existence which again makes Doctor Who a first in that field. But that is all for this instalment of Weird Who. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please remember to leave a like and leave your comments as well. Do you own the square CD of this release or do you have the normal CD? Do you have the vinyl release? Let me know in the comments below. Please leave your suggestions on what you want me to talk about next on Weird Who. I have a few upcoming ideas, but I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions too. And until the next one, I will see you all next time. You vicious old queen. You vicious old queen. This program has been brought to you in part by our producer level patrons. With your support, you help keep AMTV running and the programs coming to your screens. Thank you. And that does bring us to the end of another evening here on AMTV. We hope you enjoyed the program and we hope to see you next time. Good night. <laughs>